How are you feeling? I'm in a lot of pain. You're feeling? I don't think I can get out to even look at the flea market right now. How are you feeling? I feel better than I did yesterday. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Oh, man. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, it's so perfect. Nothing is wrong. I'm feeling great. Awesome. During her very first few days in Colombia, Chris has had some strange behavior. We're going to have to go to a pharmacy today. From her immediate purchase of pain medication at the pharmacy to her randomly dropping the news about needing a major surgery. To fix my neck, they have to put a metal bar around here and screw it for a year. She dumped a lot of baggage on her soon-to-be wife, Jamie. I want to go to a store where they have weapons. I don't really like the idea. She also raised a lot of questions, and it was hard to determine what was really going on with her. She blamed all of her issues on medical conditions. Narcolepsy is a sleep disorder. I have memory problems. I have sleep spells. But Chris has been talking to Jamie over the phone for a year, and Jamie seemed just as surprised as the rest of us by how much care Chris really needs. Might end up getting karate kicks in the sleep. <laughs> Tiene pesadillas, quiere portar armas. Y necesito una cirugía complicadísima. But the medical conditions themselves don't seem to be what Jamie has an issue with. It's Chris's random disappearances that make her worry about their future together. Chris desapareció 20 días antes de mi cumpleaños. Y regresó o apareció de nuevo para mi cumpleaños diciéndome que lo sentía mucho, que tenía muchos problemas. And just a few days before they are supposed to get married, Chris has something to tell Jamie. I was served papers to go to court. Apparently, she has to go back to Alabama to help prosecute a guy that stole a rare motorcycle from her. Doesn't that just sound so bizarre? And for just a split second, I'm thinking that Chris has been in Colombia for a while as she's finding this out. But no, then I remember that she's only on her third day there. Jamie looks almost nauseous while Chris is talking about having to leave and put this guy in jail for what he did. Supposedly, this rare bike was worth $50,000. And Chris wanted to sell it and bring that money to Colombia for them before it was stolen. I can't not put this man in jail for what he did. This seems like a made-up story, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. If this court case was so important, why the heck did she move to Colombia right before it starts? Jamie doesn't seem to care about the bike and is more worried that this is a sign that Chris is about to disappear again. Eight months ago, Chris was supposed to visit Colombia, but she got cold feet and then disappeared for an entire month. And what she is about to say is a good example of her strange behavior. She says that Jamie broke her trust, but then in this interview says another reason for ghosting her. I became overwhelmed with her neediness and I ghosted her. It's not adding up. Jamie is devastated and thinks that Chris won't come back if she leaves. But the next day, Chris's behavior goes from strange to downright concerning. I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> Chris was jumping onto a bed the day before and now can't even sit up. You're feeling? I don't think I can get out to even look at the flea market right now. What happened? I'm in too much pain. It's so bad that they have a doctor come to look at her. The sudden shift from jumping on a bed to not being able to move makes you wonder, is this real chronic pain or is this something else? As an audience, it's hard not to make assumptions. I'm worried. I don't know what happened. Lucia is so bad. She feels bad. <laughs> it really seems like she's having some sort of withdrawal. And if that's the case, this woman needs real help. However, we don't know what is really going on or how this show is editing her. The doctor gave Chris a shot, but she doesn't improve. Baby, mm -hmm. and here water and candies. So Chris stays in bed while Jamie goes to meet her friends for a dinner they had planned. When Jamie explains why Chris can't come to meet her friends, she also says that Chris had four car accidents. Not two, like Chris explained previously. Again, why does the story keep changing? I understand that narcolepsy can cause car accidents, but why is the number of them suddenly different? Jamie's friends also think something's up when she tries to explain everything going on. El caminar, los, el carro, todo le ha afectado muchísimo y el dolor que tiene en la espalda y en el cuello la están matando. Especially when she says that Chris might have to leave for her supposed court case. Ay no, pero está como raro. Solo pienso en está huyendo de Jamie, no se quiere comprometer, no quiere estar con ella. This is a lot for a couple that has only been in person together for a few days. 
But the next day, Chris is suddenly fine. And look at that, Chris doesn't even need to go to court anymore. Hey, they are going to try to do court without you at the moment. Like, what just happened? Besides wearing the neck brace in the car, it's like nothing happened. She was even walking up and down the trails in the next scene. And she's well enough to go glamping in a bubble tent under the stars. It is a romantic spot, and Chris has a surprise for Jamie. I asked the people at the glamping resort to help me out so that I could pull off an amazing proposal. She's proposing in person since the first time was over the phone. To me, this just seems like the wrong time to do this. Not just a proposal, but getting married really quickly. With whatever's been going on with Chris, she was just in bed, unable to move for a whole day. She couldn't meet Jamie's friends and then earlier almost left to go to Alabama. I don't know what it's like to have chronic pain or narcolepsy, but these are major health problems. So if this is what she is really dealing with, why did Chris come over to Columbia with no health plan? And how is she just better all of a sudden? Is that normal? Because it's also very convenient that she's just fine for this big glamping trip. Big Ed the Bee wants to remind you to subscribe to this channel. You're my best view. Chris goes through with the proposal and Jamie says yes. I don't think you should jump into a marriage with someone you think will just disappear at any given time, but they are jumping right in. She could have said no, and I wouldn't have blamed her for saying no. I'm not saying no. I'm saying yes all day. When they celebrate their proposal, the topic of who's coming to their wedding comes up, and Jamie admits that she hasn't told her family that she's even dating Chris. Do you think there will be any time later that you will tell your mom? Maybe a few months few years, I don't know. She doesn't feel comfortable coming out to her family yet, but really, this all just seems too rushed. There's already so much that they are dealing with. And on the next episode, they have their wedding, but it does look like Chris does end up having to go back to Alabama at some point, and everything that Jamie has been worried about comes to a head. In an earlier episode, when Chris talks about going back for the court case, she says that she would just be gone for a few days. But in a preview of what's coming soon on this season shows that Chris ends up staying in Alabama for a month. And she didn't talk to Jamie the whole month she was in Alabama. This time, she can't say she goes to Jamie because Jamie is needy. If anyone has been a lot to deal with, that person has been Chris. We know that they do get married, but can this really last? Or will Chris disappear and leave Jamie behind for good? We will have to see how this season plays out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!